Hey talkers, it's your girl Q. Wow, my voice always squeaks at a certain point. I don't know what to do about that sometimes. But anywho, so I'm talking to you guys today about two topics that occurred yesterday. After me having a conversation with you guys, it's like the internet just blew up twice. First thing first, I was at my niece's cheerleading game. I've been helping her cheerleading team um, get ready for competition and get ready for the school year's um, cheerleading season. So we had a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Although some of them girls, you know, teenagers, they be getting on your nerves sometimes, but love them little girls. Anywho, um, so yeah, so as I'm at the game and now it's halftime, I'm going through my phone to update my website, qtalks.com. I hope you guys are on there. I see a notification that Mac Miller is dead. Now, instantly, I'm like, this is a joke because it, it can't be real. You know how they always have those little hawks where it's like the little hoax. I, I said hawks. Those little hoax, H-O-A-X, where it's like um, they say someone is dead, but they're really not dead. And it's just to get the media frenzy or just to like get attention to people. So I'm going on multiple sites and I'm seeing the same thing. And I was like... This can't be real. Is is Mac Miller really dead? Mac Miller is really dead at the age of 26. And they're saying that he died because of a drug overdose. Now, I'm really getting annoyed with all of these drug overdose. And the only reason why I'm getting annoyed is because people are taking drugs incorrectly. And I was actually watching a video where some guy was like, there was a point in time where being a drug dealer was cool. Making money was cool. Now we're taking the drugs and dying. And the only reason why is because this generation now, the millennial generation, they do not know how to deal with stress. Whereas you have, think about your mom and your grandma, how they came into this country, those who weren't born here and those who were born in America and had to deal with like slavery, had to deal with all of this other stuff. They are warriors warriors whereas kids nowadays are just resorting to just getting high out their mind and just letting whatever problem that they dealing with or whatever demons that they're dealing with be controlled by the substance and the thing is like once you let that substance control your life then you're automatically in the downward spiral because it's not your best judgment, it's not your best mindset, it's not you that is making these decisions for your future. It's actually the drugs making the decision. And the thing is, like, it's really annoying because you have all of these rappers and especially the music nowadays, this generation of music, all of these artists are just filled with drugs and able to go to the studio to even lay a track. And I've seen it firsthand. I, for those who follow me and know me, like I've been in LA and um, I've been at the studio multiple times because if you do follow Q Talks, you know that I had a show called The Session and that took place in music studios throughout LA. And I've seen people pass out where I had to jump on somebody, try to revive them, like punching them, smacking them, like trying to think maybe I should do a Heimlich on them. Like, it's horrible. And then you walk in and in the studio, they have everything laid out. They have codeine, pills, weed. Everything is just laid out like a buffet. Like, sincerely, like a buffet. That, that, like, a drug of buffets. A buffet of drugs. That's how you say it. A buffet of drugs. And you sit down and, of course myself I don't do any of that stuff I'm not gonna lie I do smoke some weed but I have I'm actually fasting from it right now so I'm not doing it but I walk in and these people offer you these things yo you want any and don't forget the liquor gotta add the liquor on top of all of that and I'm like no and I've seen people sit next to me and do the mixture of the purple drink watch them do the mixture And I'm just in awe, like, you really are altering the cells in your brain. Do you guys know that? Like, you're never really the same after. Even if you decide to quit, have you ever seen a drug addict and they go through rehab and then they go through, like, 
all of these years of transition, do you ever realize that they are not the same? Like, they're just a few screws, like, loose a little bit or out. Like, something, you can tell, like, something happened. Like, you can sincerely tell. And the thing is, like, why why do you wish that on your life? And I get it. It's like, like I said in the beginning, it's these inner demons. It's all of these, like kids that are going through all of these things nowadays and they do not know how to deal with it. They do not know how to deal with stress. Society is teaching millennials and kids, especially this is why I tell my niece, is like when she gets stressed out, she throws a fit, have a seat. She does not try to find a solution ever. She wants everybody else to find the solution for her. And I always have to explain to her that you have to find the solution for yourself. There's going to be a point in time where mommy and daddy won't be able to do this for you. You're going to be on your own. As much as you praise and you cry and you say you can't wait till you're 18 to go to college. Honey, when you go to college, who you think is going to... That's where reality really hits. That's when you start to realize, oh shoot, I'm fell in this quarter. I may not graduate. Oh shoot, I have no money. I may not be able to come back to school next year. And these solutions, you have to figure out. And that's what I'm realizing kids nowadays do not know how to do. Instead, they just keep getting themselves in trouble, posting it on social media to make themselves bigger because everybody wants to be a social media star. So everyone is putting up all of these crazy videos and all of these nonsense stuff just to make themselves a social media star. But what happens after that? Because there's so many social media stars. And I get it. Some people get put on walling out. Some people get hosting gigs. Some people get certain all of those other things. But what they don't realize is that once you get into this industry, life doesn't become easier. It actually becomes harder. And I can vouch for that. Like, life does not become easier. Now it's like, all right, problem solving. Because if you have all of these PR agents trying to make these decisions for you, you're going to realize you're going to be in a hole before you know it. Mac Miller, 26 in a hole. Like, it's just mind-boggling. And I always say this. It's like, who are their PR reps? And I get it with PR reps because I had a PR rep. And it's just like, they only have so much they can say. But at the same token, they also enable the bad habits. Because they realize that although they don't care for the bad habits, but the bad habits put money in their pocket. And at the end of the day, everyone is just trying to do one thing, secure their bag. And it's sad that you got to put somebody's life at risk to secure your bag. It just shows your morals. And me as a human being, I don't condone that. Because it's just like you start to look at this person as a product and not as a human being. It's like, okay, when you're done and out, like whoever Mac Miller's PR rep is, yeah, They may be sad or whatever, but at the end of the day, they still got to eat. They're about to try to book another client because now they got to open space. And the thing is that what people don't realize with this industry is that when you can't think on your feet without having to be enabled by drugs, you're down. Like you're automatically at the loser board automatically because these people are going to look at you and be like, oh, this is about to be easy. Get him sober. I'm about to manipulate him. And you will be manipulated. Because the thing is that you don't know how to think. You're so doped up majority of the time, you can't think. And then the time when you are doped up to think, you can't talk. You can't talk. That's why, do you listen to rap music now? It's just sluggish words. Like, nobody's articulating their words. It's just, everyone is just all doped up. And the thing is, like, I wish these rappers would talk about the real stuff. Talk about what's really going on. Turn your rap into a journal. Stop doing drugs and actually let speak out. You may be helping 20 other people. Now, I'm not going to say you may. You will be helping 20 other people. You just put the drugs down for at least like 48 hours and go into the booth. Sober. Let's see what really comes out your mouth. Talk about everything you cry about at night. Talk about everything that keeps you up at night. Talk about everything that makes you want to put these drugs in your mouth. How much you want to bet. You will be helping 20 other people plus get a higher record deal. Because now you're transparent and now you're real and now you can relate. Drugs, fighting, guns, 
I can't relate to that. Maybe that's why I don't listen to rap music that much. Like, if someone introduces me into a new song, I'm a lyrics kind of girl. Let me listen to the lyrics. If I don't like the lyrics, mm, may not like the song. If I like some of the lyrics, okay, I could vibe to this. Okay, some of the things they're saying is cool. I like it. If the beat is dope, I like it a little bit. Like, that automatically adds a little cherry on top. But for me, I can't relate to drugs, violence, and guns. I don't live that life. I don't. I <laughs> don't live that life. But if you come into that booth and you talk about the struggle and trying to make it and how bills are piling up and you can't eat and you're trying to figure out where your next meal's coming, talk to me. Now I'm listening. Now I'm intrigued. Now I'm thinking about buying your record. And that's what a lot of people do not understand is like, I get it, sex, sex and drugs has always been the top seller in any entertainment industry, whether it's movies, music, fashion, whatever it is, like sex and drugs has always been the top seller. But there is a point in time, especially nowadays, where this thing is viral and it's available for the mass. What do you talk about now? What do you talk about now? Because the thing is, these millennials don't know how to problem solve. So they don't know how to figure out what the next step is. And don't get me wrong, there are times where I sit back and I'm just like, what am I doing? What's my next step? And I don't want to move. But then I have to also remember, if I don't move, nothing else moves in my life. If I don't get up and try to make this career, who's going to do it for me? I can't live at home with mama for the rest of my life. That's why I had to leave. I love my mama, but I couldn't be here for the rest of my life. And it's just, it's weird. It's just like the energy and the vibe is now off. And because of that, this brings me to topic number two. With the energy and vibe being off, how many of y'all knew that Cardi B and Nicki Minaj had beef? Now, here's the thing. The thing is, like, I've always heard about it. I, I try not to, like partake in any of the drama because I feel like Nicki Minaj is having beef with any new female rapper that steps onto the scene and it's because she wants to stay on top and I get it but competition is the only way that keeps you on top because you have no competition who's to say you're really great you know what I mean so like fashion week happened fashion week started what two days ago three days ago now today's Saturday fashion week started on Thursday Right? As you guys know, I'd be blogging about it and posting about it. If you go to QTalks.com or if you follow my Instagram, QTalks, I have been posting. I've been posting my schedule. I have been really booked and I've been really happy about that. Although I would like for it to start making some money, but beggars can't be choosers, right? Sorry, you guys. That was my cell phone. I meant to put that on silent. But. I'm just a little confused as to why they attended the Harper Bazaar event and decided to fight. Like, okay, I I know it, it may have not been Nikki, it may have been Cardi, but nonetheless, I've been hearing a lot of things about Nikki. Nikki is one of those silent killers, one of those people that, well, you know, the girl in school, you'll be chilling, she'll pass by you and be like, bitch, and then you start flipping out and everybody look at you like you crazy. That's who I hear that, Nicki Minaj is. The type of woman that'll come up next to you and be like, bitch. And then you, you start flipping out and everyone's like, oh my God, you walling out. She didn't even say anything to you. And you be like, what? Did you not hear what this girl just said? That's what I hear that, who Nicki Minaj is. She's a, type, she's a very jealous rapper. And if anybody else tries to go above her, she finds ways to keep them down. Now, let's get back to fight real quick before I get into why I believe that's what I heard about Nikki. Um, you had an all-white people event, a Harper Bazaar event. Now, let me tell you, when I, before I even heard about the fight, this was earlier in the night when they arrived to the event, to the Icon event. And um, I was a little jealous. I'm like, I've been in the fashion industry since, like, God knows when. And... I, I have yet been invited to a Harper Bazaar event. And I get it. There were times I left the industry and I came back and I left and I came back. So my name is like not there yet. But I wish I could have been invited. 
But I was like, oh, I can't wait till I get invited to these events and wear evening gowns and walk through the red carpet and get my picture taken and all of that. I was excited. And then when I see Nikki and Cardi were both there because they kept putting their pictures together, I was like, oh, that's cute. Two female rappers at the event. Okay. I didn't even see who else was there. I just found out that Kelly Rowland, Lala was there. Like, I didn't even know all of these big celebrities were there. But, I mean, it's a Harper Bazaar event, so I would not expect less. But I'm over here, and I'm just, like, jealous about them being at this event. And then I go take care of my business and come back home just to find out that these girls that I'm jealous over are acting a damn fool at this damn event. Like, I get it. Like, Nikki or they're talking about Ra Ali, if you guys know about her. She is a shoe designer and she was on Love and Hip Hop for a couple of seasons. And they're talking about that. It's because of her. They were talking about Cardi B's child. Now, that's a low blow. Because I know none of those two girls have child. I know Nicki Minaj does not have a child. And I know Ra Ali, I believe she has a son or so. I'm not positively sure. Can't Don't quote me on that. We'll do a fact check. But you over here talking about somebody else's child. Now, I don't have any kids, as I said before. But my niece is like my daughter. So if someone's talking about my niece, I, I'm going to have to check you. Because that's like, that's mine. That's, that's for me. So when you see her, just know that's me. Don't, don't, don't disrespect her. Simple as that, right? And you're over here talking about a baby, a baby, a defenseless baby that can't even defend themselves? Come on, B. Who, who's more on the loser board? Like, I get it. Cardi B was the one who acted out at the event, so it made her look even crazier. And then she left with a knot on her head that everyone's still trying to figure out who gave that to her. Because Nikki apparently may not have touched her. But they're saying Ra Ali was able to touch her. But then now they're saying the security guard probably accidentally did that to her. No one knows what the story is until someone really... They're going to hear about 30, 40, 50 different stories. No one knows the truth but God. Simple as that. But... A baby? You gonna sit here and talk about a baby? And I get it. Like Cardi B got into defense mode because that's her child. That's her baby. Her def- defenseless baby. No matter where she's at, that Bronx don't leave, honey. Like Nikki's been out of Queens for too long, so you know. She she can't defend herself like that. Plus she's smart. She knows she knows what she's doing. She has all of these endorsement deals and all of that stuff. Plus, she's been trying to get people off the carpet with her anyway. And the fact that she saw Cardi B on the same carpet with her, oh, that twicked a little thing in her brain. And that bore her, that stooped her down to talk about something irrelevant. Uh, somebody that is unable to defend themselves. And I get it. To each their own. I'm not that type of person. I want all my women to win. Black women need to start supporting each other. This is ridiculous. This is why the white is winning and we're losing. That's stupid to me. It can't only be one of you guys in the house with the blunts. For my Haitians, you know what the blunts are, the white people. It can't just be one of you guys. You all should be able to be in the house to be able to push out the blunts so you can all eat together. That's just my mindset. If Is anybody else with me? I, I would like... Uh, Woohoo. <laughs> I'm like really loving these effects, you guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, they just set you guys up for. I just sincerely set you guys up for a failure. Can't wait to keep using these effects. Anywho, but like, there's just certain things that I'm just a little confused about. And what I am hearing is that the reason why Nikki, that these rumors are happening is because Remy Ma went on the Wendy Williams show and she was explaining about how she doesn't care what Nikki says on rap because that's what your job is. You're supposed to be on top. You're supposed to tell people I'm number one by my album. But what I was hearing is the behind the scenes stuff that this is what I'm repeating what she said, the behind the scenes stuff that we don't see, the... Oh, trying to get her kicked off a red carpet, trying to get her not to go to events, trying to get other rap, female rappers to not 
be in her presence. If she's in a building, another female rapper cannot be in that building. And that's not cool. We all got to eat. That's not cool. And I get what, what um, Remy Ma said when she said, when you start messing with my bags and start messing with the money that I use to take care of my kids and give them a home and put food in their mouth, I, I get it. I see why we get into that defense mode and it's like, now, it's, now I'm seeking blood because now you're messing with me. And the thing with Cardi B is that that could have been the cherry on top about her kid. She could have been playing with her since the beginning because Cardi just stepped on the seat. So right now, Nikki has all the upper hand in everything. If they need Nikki somewhere, Nikki has the right to be like, I'm not showing up if she's there. And now that this happened, Cardi is about to lose mad endorsements. She may not be even be invited to events where Nikki is going to be more of a priority than she is. Unless she really finds a way, their PR rep finds a way to spin this, she, she may be out of this industry. And this industry don't care. They don't care about morals or what someone was doing to you. This is not high school. This is a business event. At the end of the day, you can't act a fool. Simple as that. Someone stoops low, you go high by the great Michelle Obama. Like, there's just really, like, there's really no explanation for you to be acting a fool in an evening gown to try to fight somebody coming for your family. And I get that. And I get, like, that was probably the last straw. Like, she was doing it all. But at the end of the day, business is business. And you did this at a Harper event during a huge time of the year, Fashion New York, New York Fashion Week. So everyone is watching. You didn't do this at a small little event in Alabama where stories can build and finally someone finds out. You did this at New York Fashion Week at a Harper Bazaar event. Harper Bazaar owns the fashion industry. You may not be allowed. You may be blacklisted in the fashion industry. And the fashion industry is a big industry. A lot of celebrities jump on that industry, start clothing lines, get designers to give them clothes to wear. If you have no clothes to wear, who's going to give you something to wear? And don't get me wrong, you have all of these new designers who will be more than happy to give you something to wear because getting their name out there is like the best thing for them. But nonetheless, your Gucci's, your Givenchy's, your Louis Vuitton's, like these are the people that you kind of want on your bandwagon at the end of the day, at the end of the day, but that's just my thought on the two big news that happened these past two, um, that happened last night, these past two days, it's been so long, like, so much has happened, felt like it was more days, it's just happened less than 24 hours, ain't that crazy, life just happens like this, within a snap of a finger, if you guys heard my snap, (laughs) all right, talkers, till later, bye! Don't forget, go on my website and comment or comment underneath so I can see what you guys think about this. I want to know your opinion as well. Till later. Bye.